The sky's the limit with these right here. And now this gives me the ability to work anywhere on this table that I want. I really love this design. So welcome back everybody. In today's episode, we're gonna be custom making some specialty tools for our new welding table that we just built here on the channel. That video is doing really well. There's a lot of interest in it and good news. We have nothing but a pile of DIY videos planned for this entire year. We'll still do our occasional daily homestead type videos, but we've got a lot of work and fun projects to do. So let's discuss a problem with doing a standard smooth top welding table like this. This is the most common what most people have because, well, it's the most affordable. There's things called fixture tables to where there is holes drilled typically on two inch center every so often. I think they're three quarter inch holes or five eighths, something like that. Those are very expensive tables, but they allow you to put specialty fixture tools in and clamp down anywhere on the table and have stops and all kinds of awesome stuff. Way out of my budget. So I've got two options here. I can either try to precision drill hundreds of very large holes on this table, which would be a nightmare and take forever, but it's not really possible because I've got a full welded grid underneath this table to support it, to make it not warp. And well, I can't do those exact two inch on center spacings. Uh, I can't do them at all actually. So I got to thinking whenever we're working on welding projects, I left a big lip all the way around the edge of the table to where, well, I can clamp down and use my clamps and get to two sides of a project. What about if I have a piece of steel? Say we're working on one big project and I got it clamped on the edge, and then we got two pieces that say butt together out here that I need to weld. Well, really it's best to have them butt to something to keep them square and clamp them down so whenever you're applying tacks or heat, they don't try to warp and move on you. But how do you do that? You can't really, well, you can't clamp down in the middle of a table like this without drilled holes and fixtures. So I've been racking my brain and I think I'll come up with something. What works well on steel? Magnets. Problem is most magnets are weak. And then I thought about this company that I order from all the time, Vivor. They are like the Harbor Freight of online. They tend to have a little bit of everything and it's relatively affordable. So I got on their website and checked. They offer heavy duty magnets right here. I bought the smallest one they offer. This has a 220 pound lifting capacity and it says it has a two and a half times safety rating. So I'm assuming that means it can hold two and a half times what it's rated for, 220 pounds. Don't ever exceed the rating of these though. What these are for, you see the lifting hook on top. You put these on a piece of steel, you can see it's not magnetized. You flip this bar over and it's got a heavy duty neodymium magnet in there. Now I can't get this off the table for nothing. So when you need to pick up big pieces of sheet steel like this, they offer really large models. I think I'm gonna buy a couple of those for getting steel out of the back of trucks and lifting it with the tractor. But I wanted their smallest model because, well, 220 times two and a half, I believe, is plenty of hold down force. But how do we make this into a clamp and a tool and something that we can butt up to, square up pieces of steel and clamp down. I think I got something figured out. So I was gonna build my own clamps, but I happened to be in our other favorite cheap tool store, Harbor Freight, and seeing that they had these clamps right here on sale for $3.50. For $3.50, oh, I see what we can work with here. They're fully adjustable, real quick and adjustable. I like that. And then you do your fine tuning and clamping with these right here. I had them in all different sizes. I thought the six inch version would work to cover the majority of steel that I'll be using these on. So now the question is, how do we modify that to work with this and have us a movable magnetic clamp? And I bought two of these, by the way, not a sponsored video. So we're gonna make two clamps that we can move around, experiment with this design, and I've got some ideas for some future ones. Y'all, I wanna show y'all something. I'm always trying to help our viewers out and just give some advice and tips. Look at all of this hardware that I bought yesterday. This is all nuts and bolts from quarter inch stuff all the way up to three quarter inch stuff. Here's the kicker. I mean, I have hundreds upon hundreds of pieces in here and I paid $74 for all this. For example, if you run to hardware stores, this bolt right here is typically about anywhere from four to $5 for a single bolt. Whereas where I bought all this, you buy it by the pound. So I got hundreds of dollars worth of hardware for $74, tractor supply. They're not really known for having great prices on a lot of stuff, honestly, but they're nuts and bolts. They're the only place that I know of that sells them by the pound. Just scoop a bunch into some bags. They go up and weigh it all together. The price did just go up sadly, but still it is a fraction of the cost of going to hardware store for individual hardware. Do this. All 
All right, I want to use this bar and this clamp. We need to get this bottom piece off. Looks like we need to grind this out and this should slide right off. All right, first problem that we have to figure out. Originally, I was thinking I was just gonna weld this bar to straight to the end plate of this magnet and call it good. And I love the quick adjustability of this. Well, you can see we have a problem. If I adjust this down, it hits the top of the magnet if I weld straight to it. And I can only adjust down and clamp this far. That will cover the majority of my welding projects, but what about when I wanna clamp down a piece of sheet metal or a thin piece of angle iron Something of that nature. We need to better get this down. So really, this is gonna have to be welded further out so that can go down further. Let's go see if we can find some scrap stock to weld in here and then weld this to the stock. All right, so if we dig around in the it has future potential pile, we can probably find something in here. I'm just wondering if a small piece of square tubing may be the ticket. I'm not going to be putting a tremendous amount of pressure on this. I don't really need a big piece of bar stock. If we build some bigger ones in the future, we'll probably reinforce those. Somebody suggested I build a rollout table for this saw just to kind of save my back. I think that's going to be a future project. We get some heavy duty hinges and build it where we can slide it out, pick it right up, put it on the table, put it on, slide it back underneath. All right, so you could tell whenever I was welding, it was not welding well at all. Something was off and I started having major concerns that this was aluminum. And you could see, <laughs> yeah, I was welding steel to aluminum. And here's the thing, I even checked this before I started this project. So how you can check is if you have steels with a magnet. And I was holding it up there. Well, it turns out there's so much steel on the inside of this, it was going through this end plate. And I assumed, if this is all steel, the end plate would be steel. That is not the case. So, all that just pulled off. Looks like in order to make this project a success, we're going to have to cut us an end plate like this out of steel because we can't bolt through this. There's just no room in here to have a bolt on the other side. Now, I did just check that if I put something here on the end, it does not mess with the function of the magnet. I have no idea why they put aluminum ends on a steel, I mean, that's all machine thick steel magnet right here. Of course the magnet's on the inside.
All right, so here we are with the finished product. Uh, very happy with the way it turned out. And let me go ahead and tell you, I know this is light duty. I've got the lowest clamping force magnets that uh, Vivor provided. They get much bigger, much more powerful from here. I'm probably gonna build some heavy duty versions in the future. And think about this, for example. See where I welded this on? What if I make a design in the future that we can pin or bolt and make interchangeable tools that go in, clamps that can hold sideways or all these different other functions. We may do that with a much heavier duty set of these magnets, but I wanna try this out, kind of proof of concept before I spend any more money on this and test it. But I think these are already gonna help me out dramatically. All right, so let's talk about them real quick because they serve two functions. So again, say we're building something on this table and I'm clamped over here, I'm clamped on the edge, but where these pieces meet out here in the open, like say, say my project stops over here. Well, if I start welding over here, the project lifts and you have issues. So now we can go around with these magnets, turn them on. I love the adjustability of these clamps. Get that magnet a little closer. We can adjust right down to the project. Pinch right down to it. Yes, these clamps are strong enough to lift the magnet. I've done tested it, but you can still put a couple hundred pounds of force down on this piece. Uh, plenty good for holding tacks and just keeping your project from shifting while you're working on it. So now we can go over here with this magnet, get everything lined up, turn it on, clamp our workpiece down, and it's not going anywhere. Now we can come in, do our tack welds, finish welding out, release these when we're done and we have movable clamps to go anywhere else. And I also built another design into them. So since these come off real quick and easy, I can use these as magnetic squares now or bump stops. So if I need to bump stop a piece out here, I can shift my project up to it. Same thing over here. Now my project cannot shift. There's gonna be times where that's very important. Now, yes, again, this setup is quite light duty, so I'm gonna to have to treat it that way. But what about if I wanna square up some work? I made for sure that I paid good close attention whenever I was welding these up to keep these nice and square. So now these are squares for me. So if I've got a large project that I wanna hold up here. All right, so say I had a piece that I wanna put in there and square up like this and just these are a set of holding and helping hands right here. Now we can start getting creative with all these different designs right here. That's why I'm saying in the future, I think I'm gonna build a heavy duty set of these. We may drill and tap the blocks in these, put bigger bolts, much thicker end plates, and weld uh, removable pieces so we can clamp and hold from the side. The sky's the limit with these right here. And now this gives me the ability to work anywhere on this table that I want. I really love this design. All right, I love fun little projects like this. Exciting news, we've got more tools coming into the shop. Some of them is already sitting off to the side. So the next few episodes is gonna be me setting up tools. We got big tools, small tools, all kinds of cool stuff. As we build out our shop right here for all the upcoming DIY projects that we have. All this stuff is getting set up for creativity and stuff that's already planned, already in the works, some of it. And uh, trust me, you're gonna love the episodes that are coming up. Not only are we building stuff right here, we're venturing outside near the house, all these other places, and we're gonna have all kinds of metalworking stuff going on this year. You probably can't even guess what some of this stuff is. All right, this was a fun little project. If you're interested in these magnets, they're cool. There are so many more uses for them than just doing this for lifting up heavy things around your shop. I can pick up a huge piece of steel with this magnet. I've already done tested it, but I'll put a link down in the description. Again, I bought these with my own money. I think I'm gonna buy some much larger ones and uh, make some heavier duty stuff here. Plus I want larger ones anyways for lifting heavy pieces of steel and moving around the shop. These are just super handy right here. And yes, I know what you're thinking. I haven't seen anybody make anything like this. And I even got on Google and typed in magnetic welding clamps and things like that. I didn't search for long, but I didn't see nothing. I don't want to steal nobody's idea here. If somebody has created it, hey, 
let them get the props, not me. But you're probably thinking, why don't you patent something like this? Well, by the time this video is released, there's probably somebody already overseas making these right here, getting them ready to sell if they think there's a desire for it. And I went through a patent process a long time ago, many years ago, lost two years of my life, thousands of dollars only to see the product I was designing. Well, never get its patent. And then another company started producing and selling it. So I've got a bad taste in my mouth for the patent stuff. Y'all ask me that all the time. I'd rather just create make some YouTube content, and just try to make an honest living. All right, y'all, next episode, some cool tools, and then we start creating some projects around the property. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.